All right, so um, I guess this is just going to be a quick introduction to drawing. Um, and, well, how do I look at drawing? I look at drawing as um, kind of a, it, it's a visual language. Um, and what I mean by that is it's a handwritten language which is meant for communicating three-dimensional form. So with any written language, normally you'll have, you know, your characters, you'll have your A, your B, C, D, E, and there is um, a set of characters or letters that you can use um, and you can make them up uh, when you're drawing. So in this case, the what I'm going to use is this. I'm going to use this as my character set. And what this is, this is an ellipse. So if you know you have an ellipse like that, it's an ellipse that is turning away from you. That's what I'm, that, this is going to be the character set that I'm going to use. So if I start out with something like say, um, here, let's take a sphere or a circle rather. And I said this was about communicating three-dimensional visual forms. So using that same character set, if I were to start placing them on the actual surface and changing the angle of them, then this one goes here. And at the edge, I get this. And at the very edge, I get this. And I can continue changing this character set. So I am indicating surface form. I am not just indicating, I'm actually communicating surface form. I said it was a visual language, and this is what I mean by that. Okay. So you can, you know, it, it looks like that surface is actually curving away from you. And there's different ways in which I can use this same character set, this same... I mean, the thing is that not only do the characters, like, in this case, with, uh, with, with regular handwriting, handwriting just goes kind of left to right. Um, but in the case of this character set, there's, you know, I can angle them and I'm even allowed to overlap them. Um, I can do them like this. I can change their angle like so, or I can do the next one, which is like an ellipse like so. Okay. So a lot of the, the times when I show, um, any kind of drawing exercise like these, these are all just their handwriting practices, what they are. They give you a good sense of a, a bit of manual dexterity, you know, to give you the ability to, you know, write the letter. Well, you know, I have the letter A like so, right? Then can you try writing it? slanting right do you have that ability to transform the letter and turn it around so the exercise this exercise is really meant you know to give you that ability to turn the characters around um, when you're communicating the you know a turning form a turning surface so this other exercise here when I was doing the toroid, right? This is the same application of characters. It's it's, it's, the, it's the same character set. Um, but there's kind of, you'll notice there's a tilt. And this tilt is governed by a 90 degree perpendicular, the major axis of these ellipses. It's, it goes through a 90 degree perpendicular alignment to that central axis and in this case it's different here i'm tangentially applying these ovals i'm putting them on the surface right this is sectional which means if i have you know um you know let's say a hand like this with fingers right if i draw one finger right i can turn that and make it come towards If I turn it to the side, I can, this is sectional. So a good practice, a good bit of practice is to practice drawing these, this single character or a character set 
and try to turn it. Work with it sectionally. You're drawing a cross section. Slowly turn it. Turn it. And make it go away. Practice your handwriting. Now, another thing is I don't want you to just, you know, think of this as just a character set and these are the rules and this is how you must go about doing it. I'm showing you that there is a skill there, something that you can get better at. And there's also, you know, if you're going to be an artist, you have to rely a lot, very much on your perceptions and your feel, your feelings. Um, as much as this is a technical exercise, it is going to rely on your senses and your feelings. Um, so what I mean by that, here, let's switch up my camera. And I'll draw a, a quick frame. Okay. One of the most important things uh, you can you can have. People always struggle with perspective. They don't. They do this whole thing with the vanishing points and, and whatnot, and they they always draw lines and try to align them. And here is how I see perspective. In this case, I'm going to draw perspective. You can see the camera is slightly off angle. I'm going to draw using the camera as my guide. So, that is what I see. You know, that's what the camera is seeing. I'm drawing for the camera right now. And what I'm not doing is I'm not doing this. I'm not doing the whole thing where you draw the horizon line and you know you have a vanishing point and that that doesn't you know that does not take into account your sense of perspective. This doesn't. This is just kind of forcing some kind of arbitrary rules. It's a good st starting point, I suppose. But it, people start fighting with with you know low horizon line, high horizon line, this and that, and. I, I never do. I like I use my own my own senses. I use my own sense of perspective that allows me to tell, you know, if I want to divide that surface in half, that line goes out of out of there. Up here, if I put a line here and I make this line go further back, it doesn't connect here. It's wrong. What it does is I know that there is something that the inner corner of this box is obscured because I've cut a hole here. That line gets interrupted and really the back of the box is somewhere over here. Okay, so knowing this, that means that this line is going to go back and probably connect over here and it's going to run into that line right i'm not treating the paper as a flat piece of paper this might be a two-dimensional medium but the way you think and the way you see has to be three dimensional that means that if i take a line and i put one here and i gonna, i'm going to push it back into depth it's going to be hidden back there it's going to connect back there. If I do, let's, let's go back to that elliptical character, that elliptical character set. That means that I know that if I were to extend this across, it's going to be somewhere here. But I know that it's going to run into this line right here. So this is what it means to analyze and to think while you're drawing in three dimensions. There is a depth. And I am carving space, I am manipulating. In fact, I might even say that if there was a vanishing point, you know, it might be somewhere back there. My problem is I keep sliding this thing around when I really shouldn't. The important thing is that when you draw, what you do not do is you don't shove your face you know, right up to the screen. It doesn't help you. 
Don't worry about line quality. Line quality is the last thing you should be fussing about. It's where the lines go. It's where the lines begin and where they end, how they are, you know, where they go through. That matters more. And even though, you know, like, you don't always have to do them from one single stroke, right? I have tools to help me do that kind of thing. But sometimes I don't even use those tools. If I don't use those tools, then I do this. I, I, I do little pieces of the line because my brain's going to connect them for me. Like, like this. If I draw an ellipse, I don't always have to do one continuous elliptical stroke. It's purely cosmetics. It's like adjusting the font you know, on, on, on your web browser. You're just you know, the font on your word processor. That's all it is. All of this stuff about line quality, thick and thin, you know, and, and, and making the line, you know, stylizing it and curving it, putting little hooks on it. It's just font. It's not important. And you can, and when I say that line quality, you know, if you don't trust me for saying that line quality is not important, look at it this way. I hacked my Wacom driver. I can get perfect lines. I can, I have, a, I have the rulers and guides to generate perfect ellipses and I can, you know, do, uh, you know, I've got like these. helical screw guides, right? I've got the best line control on a Wacom tablet in the world, and you can take it from me that it's not important. That this, I say, work with simple tools. Work with simple tools that give you a reliable line. Turn off that brush pressure. Turn off your digital brush pressure. Work in pen. You know, work with felt tip markers or, or something that is going to give you a very direct line. Later, you can worry about pencil shading and that sort of thing. But if you really want to learn draftsmanship and you want to be able to control three-dimensional form and you want to be able to see every single one of these pieces of paper or every canvas as like a holodeck or some kind of three-dimensional printer where you can draw and push in and create things, then you make yourself a very simple pen. You use a very simple tool, one that's reliable, gives you a good reliable line, and you work with that because, like I said, you are, now you're communicating. If you, when you get into drawing, right, I can communicate that that thing is turning. If I want to draw you know, a person's face, And I'm going to start using that same character set. And you'll notice that I'm doing this kind of a, a scribble. I'm, I'm, it's not going to be pretty. It's because there's no style yet. You don't have, the last thing you should be worrying about is the font of, of your word processor when you are writing something out. What I care about more right now is the three-dimensional surface. No, it doesn't have style. No, it doesn't look pretty. But it, you have to learn how to speak clearly. You have to master your vocabulary, your grammatical structure. You have to know the rules before you can bend them, before you can start creating poetry. So I'm just going through and using the same. It's almost like I'm taking quarters and I'm just aligning them all over the face and just sticking them on like they're held on by, by sticky tape or glue. Okay, so this whole time I'm thinking, you know, of ways to turn, turn these objects. And like I say, it's, it's, there's three ways I can think of using these ellipses. One of them is to, or, or using a line rather, one of them is to stick them on the surface. You can, 
you know, plaster them on and turn them as they go off to the side. The other way is sectionally. So if you have a hand or a finger, you wrap them around, right? Every finger, every arm, there's a flow. It goes from here and it moves out. There's a pathway. And so cross-sectioning across the flow. When I draw those ellip those spirals, they're just multiple ellipses joined together. And then finally, you can encircle or encapsulate, meaning you go around the side surface. And that is the last thing you learn. So by that, I mean, if I draw something like that, there, it's been encapsulated. Now I can go in here and I can begin placing the ellipses on this. A three-dimensional handwritten language. It's a, it's a handwritten language for communicating three-dimensional form. And then I can work out over this sectionally. Cross-section. No, there's no style. It is purely a technical and analytical way to look at things. But the thing is that it gives you the feeling of depth. It gives you the feeling of solidity. So I say it's too soon. If you're starting out, you know, if you're, if you're just picking up a pencil for the first time, if you don't have a grasp on, on perspective, it's too soon to be trying to find, you know, the font for your word processor. It's too soon to be, you know, trying to be unique and different. Um, you know, when you have control, when you have control over the technique, control over your skills, and things are working the way you want them to, to the point that you're not even thinking about technique and skill, then at that point, there's nothing to do but feel. There's nothing to do but think about what it is that you want to draw, what you want to talk about, and how you want to say it, how you want to come across. If you want to be funny, or you want to be informative, if you want to be sarcastic, if you want to be satirical, you know, those things can only happen when technique is out of your way, when technique is no longer your obstacle, when technique becomes the means through which you express yourself, then you have the ability to, you truly have the ability to be unique and different because you're no longer imitating other people. You're no longer, you know, you're no longer f trying to, you know, copy the same, another person's line style and trying to imitate them by copying the fonts they use for their word processor. In this case, you know, this drawing medium that you see that I'm using, this digital drawing medium, this is my word processor. Hope that helps.